<laughs> oh. So in my last video, I did a song about apostrophes. A, a song about apostrophes. A song about apostrophes. Though to be fair, I didn't cover the entire topic. Rest assured, that was intentional. And hopefully this video will clear up everything you need to know about apostrophes for writing. In English writing, apostrophes have two uses. Two, not three. Two. The first use, as ingeniously pointed out by my song, is what we call the genitive or possessive use. You use the apostrophe followed by an S, or sometimes just an apostrophe, to show that somebody owns something, with eight notable exceptions. Let's see if I can remember them all. My, his, hers, yours, its. Theirs. Ours. Oh! Duh! Whose? So with the exception of those eight, you can use an apostrophe to show possession by adding apostrophe s or just adding an apostrophe. Now let's move on to the second usage. Contractions! I'm not talking about labor, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I know. Uh, yeah, returning to humor is a bit of my specialty. Now I don't have much time in this video to go through the history of contractions, but I can tell you how apostrophes are used to mark contractions. So generally, the apostrophe mark is used as a replacement for certain letters in words in order to make them shorter, easier to read, and easier to Say. The most common example is cannot changes to can't. In this situation, the apostrophe takes the place of the N-O in not. Other contractions include will not, won't, have not, haven't, and it is. It's! Now let's talk about it's for a minute. One of the most common spelling mistakes involving apostrophes is the word it's. It's a very easy mistake to avoid as long as you know the two things that I've already taught you in this video. The personal pronoun it's does not contain an apostrophe, such as its mandibles were gleaming. <laughs> gleaming mandibles. And the ever famous use of the contraction, it's a trap! It's here being a contraction of it is. So before you use that apostrophe, think about the words you're contracting. If you can't use the original versions, don't put the apostrophe there. Whoa, 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 that was a little intense. Okay, 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 I'll calm down. Interesting side note about contractions before I finish. There's a famous saying that goes, shoulda, coulda, woulda, or of course, should have, could have, would have, or more appropriately pronounced or written, should've, could've, would've. Try looking up those three contractions in the dictionary. You won't find them. Don't ask me why, I guess they think it's lazy. Now speaking of the perception of laziness in contractions, most teachers will tell you to avoid using contractions in formal writing. I personally think this is a bunch of nonsense because we've been using contractions for so long that we don't even notice that we use them anymore. I don't find it any less formal when somebody uses a contraction. That said, the general idea is to make your teacher happy, so you should probably just avoid using them. The third thing that I have to mention about apostrophes that most people actually mention first, but I don't want to be negative. Never, ever, ever use an apostrophe to make something plural. These Snackwell's Devil's Food Cakes are a perfect example. This apostrophe shows possession. They are Snackwell's Cakes, right? Devil's Food. The food belongs to the devil. But look here, cookies, cookies, cookies. That's a plural word. It's not C-O-O-K-I-E apostrophe S. So before you use that apostrophe, just don't do it, just don't do it. So there you have it, folks. Possession, good. Contraction, okay. Plural, bad. When it comes to apostrophes, that was less impactful when I said it that way. My dog is like scowling at me. <laughs> She's like, you threw me.